A goofball. What off meta support should I play? Been playing Ari, been fun, but looking for a new one. You're looking for an off meta support. So it depends what your goal is. Is your goal to have fun? Is your goal to win? Things like that. So if your goal is to win, and we were to go look at powerful, in quotes, support characters that are off meta, um, Timo and Shen seem to have high win rates. So maybe there's something there, but that's probably not actually what you're looking for. Um, and so the thing I would think about in terms of an off meta support is like, what are you trying to do and what experience are you trying to have? So as an example, I would argue it, a fun off meta support who's not that good is Malphite. <laughs> because what Malphite support does is he gets a bunch of AP and then tries to one shot the AD carry and make their lives miserable. And then if you paired Malphite with an AD carry who's like, you know, fairly bursty, like maybe a Samira, or you paired him like even a Yasuo AD carry or something, you can do some pretty dirty and um, unfair things in given your game. And so if I was to play an off meta support, I would maybe consider like, are there ones that are going to like <laughs> enrage your lane opponents while still being like some degree of viable, right? And like, Malphite might be a good example. Malzahar might be a good example where he just ults you and then he uses his like minions to like block the enemy hooks, things like that. Like um, Twisted Fate support can be fun because you just like repeatedly targeted stun people. And then if you wanted to go to Crazy Town, like maybe you play like um, Yasuo support and then you just try to carry the game every game. <laughs> um, and then you, you lose a lot, right? But you, the games you win, I guarantee you the games you win, your opponents will be losing their minds, right? The games that Yasuo support wins, like the enemy team is just like, what is going on? Oh, I know one, I know one. You could try LeBlanc support. I've actually been playing against LeBlanc support a surprisingly large amount in higher MMR. I don't know if it's like catching on or if it's meta or something, but I've, I've seen it a lot actually recently, you know, comparative to like how it's popular I would expect it to be. And a lot of them, what they're doing is they aren't even supporting. They're just walking around the map and they're just, you know, running around stunning people and trying to just have insane, abusive, nasty map pressure um, compared, with their, compared with their junglers or their laners. And, you know, every once in a while they'll show up bot lane. And so you could try things like that, where like hyper roaming, aggressive supports, like I don't know, like a Le, like a LeBlanc or um, a uh, your Ramis support, freaking get level two and then roll around, try to bully people that way. Pike has a forty percent ban rate in my elo. Does he? I need to investigate. Pike does have a very high ban rate right now. Um, and it is 40% in Challenger and Grandmaster. Oh man, maybe I, should, maybe I should play Pike. High MMR seems to be like Pike and LeBlanc are two of the top bands around there with like Draven and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, Pike does have a high ban rate. Um, the thing I'll say about ban rate for a number of characters is our ranges for ban rates in terms of like what we're willing to accept as a max like gets up to around 40 to 50. 50 being like the absolute max. Like usually the character is above 50% ban rate and uh, in a specific MMR we like tend to like make sure like tend to need to nerf it. So Pike is definitely on the edge there of like he's getting close to like the need to nerf territory. But on the flip side of things, there are certain characters that we just realize in certain MMRs are going to have higher ban rates. Like as an example, at the end of the day, we probably shouldn't nerf Zed when he's, say, a 30% ban rate, because that's just Zed. Zed is going to be one of the more banned characters in average MMR. And on the flip side of things, it's like, there's only so much we should nerf Draven by, given that like he's probably always going to have a high ban rate in high MMR, um, given his you know lane dominance and one trickiness and all of that. And so while we, do, we will look at characters like Pike, Draven, LeBlanc, and we'll see high ban rates and high MMR, and like that will often be a good reason to nerf them. Just want to note that just because a character's ban rate is high does not mean it should immediately be nerfed. We have like bands of ban rate that we will we would like consider there, but forty percent is definitely like 
on the edge of bands where we start like thinking about like okay this is a very high band rate like there's there's perhaps something we should do so not saying he'll be nerfed not saying he won't be nerfed just noting that like an assassin having a high ban rate it not in and of itself is not an immediate reason to nerf a character um but it is a reason to like start talking about that character and like asking questions about it but there's always probably going to be some characters in like the 30 to 40 percent ban rate right Will you ever rework Shaco? He got so boring. Um, if we were to rework Shaco, I think the main point to rework would be his visuals. I and like, you know, the fact that he only has a few animations, a few lines, all that stuff. Shaco's kit is very, very, very good. Um, and I would argue it would be a pretty big mistake to do any meaningful rework to it. Now, if we were like fixing it up, making it more fluid, more fun, you know, adding a few more toys to it, uh, bug fixing the ult, all those different things. Like there's definitely things we can do to improve Shaco's kit. But if we're pitching like, hey, this guy needs a full scale rework, I would argue he does not. He's actually one of our more unique and special and good champions. I legitimately think he's a good champion from a gameplay standpoint. Obviously like he's got some frustration issues, um, but in terms of like what that character is trying to do and how he delivers it in the game, he does it, I think, very perfectly. Um, and so I would, if we were to change Shaco, my personal take on it would be we would update his visuals and then perhaps pair those with number of quality of life improvements to his gameplay. Like that I think would be the most effective and like best direction for a Shaco rework. Um, Cause his visuals are definitely dated, but I, I don't think he's the type of character that would need major gameplay changes. Uh, we, in fact, have already given him, in the past, some major gameplay changes, and a number of those we ended up reverting or moving away from, because we kind of, like, realized, well, actually, what we had on this character was fairly iconic and fairly good and fairly special. Uh, Shaco's kit is, I think, one of the perfect examples of just, like, if you want to play a big brain scumbag character who just, like, outsmarts people, and, like, there's not a lot of characters who actually do that in League in the way Shaco does. And so, like, you really feel like a specific type of jerk when you're playing that champ, a specific type of villain, which I think is actually good for him. Um, and then I think he's also one of our best examples of a toolbox character. The idea of a toolbox character being that, like, a lot, Shaco has a lot of different things he can do with his spells and different ways to use them, where many League characters in League of Legends are, like, combo characters, where they have, like, a game plan and a pattern and all the spells flow together to like fix that game plan and pattern. Shaco is more like, I'm presented with many situations and I have a number of tools that I can like use at various times to defeat given situations. Um, is it a box? Is it an ease slow? Is it an execute? Is it a backstab? Is it my clone? Is it my teleport stealth, right? And so yeah, I'd say he's like fairly unique, fairly special and fairly good. Also, I'd say Shaco is actually one of our best examples of a hybrid character in the sense that he has multiple viable builds with multiple um, multiple like different build paths. Uh, and the build paths tend to express themselves very differently while still being like viable and fun. And so it's like, hey, AP Shaco, viable, has a game plan, completely different from AD Shaco. And then, I don't know if he can still do it, but back in the day at least, there was also like, you know, bruiser variants of him and whatnot. I'm not sure that's viable anymore, but like, there's like, you know what, you could throw in a bruiser item or two if you needed it, or, and yeah, so I'd say like, that's another example of like, him being awesome.